Constantia Insurance believes that their partner success is their success, and they strive to work together to co-create solutions and ensure that their partnerships thrive and deliver shared, sustainable value for all. One of the partners we are referring to is Asriel Aviation Africa, an underwriting an underwriter that teamed up with Constantia in December 2018. And today I have the privilege to talk to Jan Kutsia, MD of Asriel Aviation Africa, who has been involved in aviation insurance since 1988 and has been managing underwriting agencies since 1995. A wealth of experience. Jan, it's good to connect. Thank you, Rianette. Maybe we can start off by you telling us a bit more about yourself shortly and also maybe just include a bit of Asriel Aviation Africa. Yeah. Well, I was um, always interested in flying. So uh, prior to, well, I think during high school, I still went for pilot selection. The Air Force didn't make it. They had some strange reason why not anyway. Um, then did my national service in the Air Force, but not as a pilot, unfortunately, as a fireman. So I had to look at the planes, God couldn't touch it. <laughs> um, and then when I finished that, my dad was a manager at Suntom, so I joined them after the two year uh, national service. And then during that time, I did my pilot's license, private pilot's license, fixed wing aircraft at Clarksville. And so I always had a passion and interest in aviation. So. I then joined the broker, aviation broker in 1988, memory serves me right. And yeah, I just went from the, from broking to underwriting, uh, uh, felt the underwriting fitted better with, for me. And yeah, as I say, so it's been on and off, you know, with a couple of companies and interesting enough, we actually, our first agency, I actually, uh, we had with uh, Constantia back in 95, memory serves me right. So it's amazing how the, the wheel has turned, you know, and here we are again. And so obviously, so when we started with uh, Azrael in 20, 2010, we had the um, unique opportunity where we could, uh, you know, come up with a brand new logo that suited us. Um, and obviously we tried to find a suitable name. So. Obviously, we tried to focus on the triple A, like a triple A rating. And so aviation had to be in the name. And obviously, I needed something else. So long story short, um, I found uh, in a, it was like almost encyclopedia at the church, where they, in the Hebrew name, I came across the name Ezreal. And it appealed to us because it say, so the, in Hebrew, it means God is my help. And so we've obviously in, yeah, we've got many testimonies to that of how he's helped us over the years, up and down, but yeah, but we still, yes, I'd be very grateful. And that's basically, yeah, the background of Agile. So, and as you correctly said, so we partnered then with Constantia 1st December 2018. And obviously, yeah, as I say, we, we're very happy with them as a carrier and you know, get along very well with them. So, very nice company to be in partnership with. I, I love the story about how you chose your name, Jan. Um, <laughs> You've partnered with Constantia in 2018, according to my records. Yes. Why do you believe that this is a good partnership? I think, you know, it's, I mean, we, so just, just a bit of background on that. Um, Sentry gave us notice that they didn't want to, because we've been in partnership with them prior to that, uh, since 2010. So 2017, they said, guys, and we sort of lost our appetite for aviation for various reasons. So then, uh, they very kindly gave us a year to find another carrier. So we were in a very unique predicament because normally you will have an insurer that will back you, but not the reinsurance. But I mean, we had due to obviously the years that we've um, been involved in aviation and, you know, established ourselves, we had the reinsurance lined up on, behind us, but we didn't have a carrier. So it's, it's quite bizarre. So we struggled quite a bit. Uh, <clears throat> I won't mention a particular company's name, but I mean, they, they wasted our time for two months solidly. And then sort of a final, so obviously we had to find a new partner from 1st December 2018. And <clears throat> what happened was um, uh, Oak Tree, the reinsurance brokers, then put, put us in touch with Constantia. And I promise you, 
coming from the background where some company wasted our time for two months, meeting after meeting and spreadsheet, spreadsheet. We had two meetings with Constantia. The one was they liked what, the, what we had to say. They looked at our stats. They were they were super impressed. We already had the reinsurance lined up. And the next thing was second meeting with them and the, the deal was basically done. So, I mean, that's always been really, always really uh, important to us, which I value quite a lot. And I must say since then, you know, just, I mean, obviously now through, they've also been through a couple of changes during the last couple of years. But yeah, if you just see how the company's been turned around and, you know, the things that they they um, they seek and how to improve on stuff, uh, it's just, I think, yeah, we, we, we're a very good fit with, you know, between the two companies. I, I love it when people and um, companies can make quick decisions, you know, yeah. the, the red tape can kill you. So it's fantastic yeah, to sure. hear that once... Um, you've approached them, they make the decision very fast. Okay, so Jan, the aviation industry has been hit quite hard in the last two and a half years. Um, can you share some facts, stats, and then also maybe your prediction of what lies ahead in your space? Well, as is, you know, as I was, when the COVID thing happened, it, there was a lot of, well, obviously with all the low cost carriers, or airlines, but I'm talking locally. I think the charter market sort of died down because it was so much cheaper for guys to hop on a Comair or a Mango, whatever the case may be. And my prediction was at that stage that I'm th and when, as obviously the, the restrictions could, were lifted, that demand for, because obviously if you fly as a private chart, look, at it's more expensive, but you don't have all the protocol of going to airport, and I, mean, if, I don't know if you ever went through OR Tambo in the midst of it. It was horrendous. Now you also in all the pandemic, you have to sit squashed between 150 people on some one plane. Versus now you, you can select who you want to fly with, when you want to go, when you're going to come back. And and obviously, I've just read an article now in the last week where I think the one airline, the local airline. Uh, semi, they wrote an article. And they they believe they back up to about 65 to 77 percent of passengers. That was based on 2019 um, uh, figures. So it's quite impressive, and they call it the green shoots coming out. You know? so, <laughs> <laughs> so I mean, they're expanding. So it's and up, you know, as you say, you had the pandemic, then you had the demise of SAA, SA Express, Mango. I mean, look, obviously, Comet also went through a bit of a challenge. But I mean, overall, slowly but surely, it's, it's coming back into, you know, guys are keen to fly again. And uh, so, and obviously, and we also look at the flying schools, where, uh, for instance, one at one of them, guy was telling me that, I mean, at one stage, they did a thousand hours of training a month. And then it just dropped down to basically almost 25%. And so there was a, quite a bit of a, a challenge for them because you have airplanes, you aircraft, you can't sell them, so you have to main, keep on maintaining it. Um, but as I say, surely, surely, slowly, slowly but surely, as the restriction stuff got lifted, people are, and if you look at the amount of uh, tourists, I think the guy I was saying, yeah, if I remember what, what article, in this article, he said beginning the first week of May, I think Cape Town Airport had something like 27,000 passengers coming through it. So it's quite a what a jump from zero to so as I say, we're really positive. So obviously there's other issues that comes with it. So now the RAND dollar doesn't look too great, fuel prices are going through the roof. So so yeah, that's always a challenge, I think, for <laughs> always something to keep you on your on your toes. Yeah, but I love that you focus on the positive stuff and that's what I wanted to hear. Yeah. And um, how specialized is aviation for brokers? Is it critical that they really all clued up? Or is that more your role as the underwriter to be the clued up part? <laughs> yeah, you know, the I mean, any any broker can approach us, but obviously with the aviation, it's got its own different uh, uniqueness, like the uh, abbreviations, uh, requirements in terms of uh, civil aviation laws and re regulations, etc. Um, on this on the smaller stuff, we're quite happy to assist the broker and say, you know, guide them because. Uh, one of the guys at Constantia, uh, he said to me at one stage, I said, you know, some of the guys, some of the brokers criticize us because they say we ask too many questions, you know, before we take a risk. So he said to me, yeah, and so maybe ask them the question this way. When do you want me to, under, do you want me to underwrite the risk or do you want me to underwrite the claim? 
Mm -hmm. So it's crucial that we we believe everybody needs to be on the same page. We must be get as much information as possible. So that if there is a claim, we don't sit up sit, sit with the situation where oh this wasn't disclosed and you know and then it just leaves a bad taste in everybody's mouth. So we're quite happy to assist the guys where we can. The where it gets a bit complicated is the further non-specialist uh, aviation brokers. If if they, for instance, have a, a present or approach us with a risk, and you know it's maybe a high-valued helicopter, for argument's sake, um, we, for instance, may not want to insure it 100%. So we'll say we'll put up the lead line of 60%. So then it's their duty to go to other insurers and try and get support for the other 40%. Okay. And the problem then is if if they can't find it local, they have to go to take it into the London market, which then makes it complicated for them because they need to have a London broker on that side in order to canvas the market for them there. But obviously we can, in cases like that, sometimes we'll say, listen, we can suggest if you want a partner, maybe as a sub broker with a professional aviation broker that's got the context, we can put you in touch with three or four of the companies and you decide who you want to deal with. But as I say, you know, just to reiterate, for us it's important that we get the right information up front and then we rate it accordingly. So if there is a claim, it just makes it so much easier for everybody all around. You have competition in the market. What makes as real the underwriter brokers would want to deal with? What makes your offering and your dealings unique? Uh, Renette, I think we obviously it's a very competitive market, it's always been. Um, because un, you know, other than just the local market, we also compete with the London market, the Russian market, <laughs> but they've been quiet at the moment <laughs> for various reasons. Um, so we always, obviously, services is it's part of our mission statement. You know, it's trying to, to provide unparalleled service excellence. So, and that is what we're trying to aim and try and guide the guys up. And as I say, it's not just due to the nature of aviation. You know, you can't just have a eight to five uh, approach. Uh, we get phone calls over weekends. You know, I mean, a pilot sick or they've got a they need to, they can't go to this destination, they need to divert to another one, but it's an excluded country, can we cover it? And then obviously that's the sort of stuff which we feel is, is very important. Um, and as, as one of the brokers said to me, he said, you know what, we can only provide good service as a broker to our clients if we get good service from you guys. And I think that's a really, very really valid point. Um, and obviously, and it's always, you know, with me. And I think the other thing is when we engage with, with our brokers is to always try and not educate, but obviously share our experience, uh, you know, and specifically, like, I don't know if it's other classes as well, where you actually get to test the knowledge, your knowledge of the policies if there's a claim. And so obviously, guys, say, why do you impose this? Then we can say, use an example, say, well, we just had this claim, well, we know about this loss. And these are the reasons why we are so it's always trying to educate so they could relay that sort of information back to uh, the clients. I met yes. a, bro a broker now last week saying, but you, we've seen that your, your terms have increased again on, the particular helic on a particular uh, type of helicopter. So I said, well, to, don't, if you look at last year's, uh, you know, uh, the scenario was if you look what how the ran is ran is deteriorate against the dollar and most of our stuff is dollar priced apart. Uh, secondly, if you look at where the fuel price is, everything is linked to it. So, you know, I don't see why insurance must, you know, only offer a two percent increase or no increase at all. So it's all about sustainability at the end of the yes. day. One hundred percent. I love the part that you mentioned the education because I think it's critical. So so many times we we don't take that role. Serious. So it's from you to the broker, but also the broker to the client. We sometimes just assume they know things which they don't always know. It's a great chat. Um, Jan, anything else you would like to share with if I news readers? So general note to brokers who already deal with you and maybe those who don't deal with you and just some something you want to say to them? Yeah, look, I mean, as, as I said, um, I think it's uh, services is very important to us and obviously we will help where we can um, and, and provide a, a proper, you know, we say we, we tailor make a proper a product for the for the broker client type thing. Um, and I say overall, we're quite positive of going forward, you know, and 
hopefully there's no more lockdowns or anything like that because I don't think anybody can afford that. But I think, yeah, just in general, um, you know, we're quite keen to help uh, new brokers and assist where we can. Thank you for the chat and all the best for Azriel Aviation Africa. <laughs> Thanks, Joanne. Appreciate it. Thank you.